hello everyone welcome to the channel so we're going to start an introdu introduction to our model builder tutorial in artmap and uh, to make our geospatial workflow completely automated using model builder in artmap so now let me explain about this uh, model builder so model builder is a visual programming environment within our gi software that allows the user to create edit and manage geoprocessing workflow without a need for writing a code it provides a graphical interface where the users can drag and drop tools and connect them together and set up parameters to automate the complex geospatial analysis and task. The primary uses of Model Builder includes the workflow automation. The Model Builder enables the user to automate the repetitive geospatial task and workflows by stringing together the sequence of geoprocessing tools. This can significantly improve their efficiency and reduce the error. A complex analysis. The user can create a sophisticated geospatial model by combining multiple geoprocessing tools and techniques into a single workflow. This allows for the execution of this uh, complex spatial analysis that could be difficulty or time consuming to perform manually. And data management. The model builder can uh, be used for data management tasks such as a data conversion, format transformation and data, uh, data set manipulation. The user can build the models to automate the data processing task and and ensure the data integrity. Overall, the model builder is a powerful tool for GIS professionals and analysts offering a user-friendly interface for building, executing and sharing the geospatial models to streamline the workflow and improve the productivity in ArcMap. So now we're going to uh, start delving into our automation in our GIS and we will start by taking a look uh, at how to use a model builder in ArcMap. So to start with, uh, why do we care about automation? Well, uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, one is sometimes when we go through a GIS process, we don't uh, actually remember what we did uh, afterward in time to uh, write the metadata or even uh, just in time to tell somebody else about it or in a couple of years we need to do the same thing uh, again and uh, we don't remember how we did it. So the model helps us to keep uh, track of that uh, by actually formalizing the process by which uh, we run our GIS analysis and uh, that has to do with our reproducibility of our own result. So in this video, we're going to show you how to convert our DEM data to a drainage network using a model builder in RGIS. So in the table of content section, you can able to visualize this is our DEM data of 10 meters. And you can also use this RTM uh, DEM data of 10 meter resolution. So now let me navigate to this option here, our toolbox. In that, in the top section here in the Arc toolbox, we're going to right click and click this option called add toolbox and in that we're going to select this particular tool called dim to uh, drainage network we're going to click this and we're going to click this option called open so once you did that the tool gets added into our arc toolbox section here so you can able to visualize the tool here dim to drainage so we're going to uh, click this uh, so plus symbol option here so you can able to uh, able to see the model here so you can able to view this particular model called Create Streamline. So uh, I get maybe a slightly unfamiliar looking icon compared to the other tools here. You can able to see that there is a difference in the, between in the, compared to the tools in, uh, in this particular symbol versus the model symbol. And most of our tools ha have this uh, little hammer and uh, this one uh, has the little boxes around the center. Uh, you can able to see that. So now let me double click this particular model called Create Streamline. So I get a geoprocessing tool uh, just like uh, any other. So uh, we're going to uh, use this uh, model builder to take a look at what's going on inside. So for that, we are, let me uh, close this. So we're going to navigate here. We're going to right click and we're going to click this option called Edit. So let me click this option called Edit. And now let me expand this. So now uh, I can uh, I get this kind of uh, canvas here that has uh, a bunch of uh, different boxes and uh, and uh, oval shapes on it and uh, some uh, colors and lines here. So the model builder helps us formalize more uh, complex processes and so it can uh, help make it much faster and uh, and uh, easier to undergo an analysis. So maybe I need to do something a lot of time and it has a lot of handwork to uh, go through it. So uh, it can be really uh, helpful if I can just run one geoprocessing tool uh, that that uh, runs, uh, runs a bunch of other in the background or uh, and uh, can run it uh, on a stack of items uh, instead of just uh, on one item. 
so uh, it can be really handy when uh, we need to automate the process many times in addition to formalizing a process so now let's add our uh, dem data into this uh, model uh, model builder so let me uh, click this uh, uh, option called input surface raster so let me select my dem data here and click ok So now uh, once we have inserted our dem data into our model builder the color of this particular bunch of uh, geo processing tools has changed and now let me explain about this uh, square uh, rectangular items and these are uh, the geo processing uh, tools they even have a little hammer on them so we can able to see here so uh, we have a hammer in this particular geo processing uh, tool that is we have a hammer this is a fill uh, tool and this is flow direction flow accumulation set null stream link and stream to features these are set up for geo processing uh, tools you can able to see here the ovals so so you can able to see here the ovals uh, or the variables and sometimes they are the inputs to the sometimes they are input tools like uh, the fill tools here fill tool which has its own uh, parameter that's input surface raster here but uh, sometimes there are the outputs of the tools here so you can able to see here this is the output tool so we can think of this uh, almost as a feature classes it's an output of surf, uh, surface raster but uh, we can uh, use those as an input to other tools so you can able to see from here so basically this uh, the oval and uh, rectangular uh, square rect rectangular shape which represents uh, a one geo processing tool for example so when you are using a geo processing tool here for example let me show you here uh, let's take a look at this conversion tool here so for example let me click this particular raster here so this particular geo processing tool has its input and output uh, output files so our input we're going to insert our data and output for the location we're going to save our data similarly we have our input uh, input uh, surface raster where we're going to insert our data and the fill is a process is going to take place and uh, we're going to convert the required uh, layer as an output raster in this uh, oval shaped one here so the model builder is similar to the geo processing with uh, a bunch of geo processing tools are connected together to perform a complex geo processing workflows so this also helps us to actually to visualize the workflow right here on our canvas here you can able to see that and uh, lay it out in a way that we can see the full process in front of us so a model is uh, ready to run i can tell because it's in uh, full color you can able to see it is in uh, full color here each of our geo processing tools are in uh, yellowish color and our inputs uh, input raster are in blue color and our output uh, the oval shaped one are in green color which indicates our model is is ready to run but uh, i can also tell that uh, it hasn't uh, run yet because the model builder gives me uh, a little signal uh, when something has already has uh, run by putting a little shadow behind it but uh, what we can do is do now is to run the model so now to run this model we're going to navigate to this option here run more run so now let me click this option called run So now uh, this is big but it pops up uh, the geo processing dialog dialogue but uh, we can tell what's currently running is based upon the what a little uh, what gets a little bigger and uh, shows in red so you can able to see here from the currently the flow direction is running here and uh, we can uh, tell it's finished uh, because those shadow behind it so you can able to see the shadow behind this particular tool so now it's currently running the flow accumulation uh, tool so you can able to see that the red indicates is currently running this particular uh, geo processing tool called flow accumulation so it is currently uh, running the flow accumulation right now and uh, that will take a little bit of time so this is a model from which we can generate our drainage and uh, drainage network from uh, the digital elevation model so what happens is uh, we provide the dem and uh, here and uh, and we will fill the sinks in the dem but uh, what it does is uh, basically it takes uh, the localized low spots in the landscape the spots where the water could flow into uh, but not flow out of it and uh, it fills them up uh, to a height on the dam 
where the water could actually flow out, flow out again. After that it passes uh, into the flow direction here and after that uh, we will use it to pass into the flow accumulation uh, and then uh, we are gonna create a, basically a set of raster a streamlines out of it uh, with a set of uh, null tools and then uh, we will uh, use the stream lines to uh, find the distinct uh, stream segments and then uh, we convert uh, those stream segments to a feature class uh, with the stream to feature uh, tool and now uh, we are on onto the set null here then the stream link uh, where uh, we create a distinct stream segments and now uh, stream to feature then using uh, that as an input uh, to convert to feature class here so the model has done so I can close this now here and now uh, nothing uh, new has shown up in our map here well I can add the add these to my display so I can right click on the streamlines here I'm gonna right click so we're gonna click this option called add to display and now let me click this option add to display so now let me uh, minimize it so you can able to view the streamlines here let me add blue color to it and click OK so this is our streamline uh, that is our drainage network uh, that resulted from our model let me zoom into this uh, you can able to see that so now let me expand the model builder environment here so right here the cell SQL so let me open this so you can able to see from here so right here the the number of cell upstream was set to a much lower value than you, you used we usually set the value to be around uh, 10,000 and we are using now as a uh, hundred but uh, we can tweak uh, that and uh, run it again uh, if we wanted to so you can also increase the value here you can also increase up to uh, 10,000 uh, it's your choice for now let me leave it uh, to a, a default value of 100 here let me close this and uh, you can also view the flow direction raster or uh, in the map section here so to do that we're going to right click on this particular of output uh, flow direction raster here and we're going to click this option called add to display so now uh, you can uh, let me minimize it so you can able to view the flow direction raster for this particular uh, study area so this is the flow direction raster now we can able to see that and now let me maximize my uh, expand my this particular window here and what I could do is if I want to now was uh, to change the the input surface raster here so suppose I could like to add a different uh, dim data so for example you can also add your SRTM dim here so instead of uh, this 10 meter dam you can add your SRTM dim and you can run the whole process again to uh, convert the dim to a drainage network using this model here so the entire process itself is automated uh, and have a, I have the full control over it and I can uh, run it again and again for as many different locations as I want and get the consistent result based upon the same workflow being uh, run each time without uh, without the potential for error that comes with me and trying to reproduce the steps each time and uh, I can also send this toolbox to somebody else also so that uh, they can use the same exact workflow which is uh, what you will do if you if you are following along with this video uh, on model builder tutorials and uh, there is a lot of uh, different advantage of using a uh, model builder and they are pretty easy to uh, put together and uh, they didn't require any coding knowledge uh, but the workflow uh, the geoprocessing workflow you've been getting used uh, to translate directly into them and uh, you can still do the uh, automation so in this video I have shown you uh, how to convert a dem to a drainage uh, network using a model builder tool in uh, ArcMap and this is the uh, a brief introduction to a model builder so in the upcoming videos uh, we're going to uh, start delving into the various concepts of a uh, model builder and uh, we have learned a bit about uh, using automation in RGIS and we have ran this uh, particular model to convert dem to drainage network to see in action uh, a few different mechanics that a model builder uh, uses to give you an, uh, a glance sense for what's ready to run and uh, 
and what has run and then uh, be able to add it to your uh, map documents so thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like